Lauren, what a great opportunity Sunday. Yeah, we're excited. Um, I think we played the Giants in the last fixtured round last year here at Elberton as well. So, um, yeah, certainly looking forward, <coughs> excuse me, certainly looking forward to going up against them on Sunday afternoon at Elberton. And I think we've had really good crowd numbers here all year and we're, um, we're hoping to get a, a massive crowd out um, to support our girls on Sunday afternoon at 4.30. And the chance that you know you're playing finals, um, how does that sort of um, change any thinking with the team or are you still going <laughs> to keep them online <laughs> my messaging all year for every game has literally been like we only get 11 games fixtured and so it's such a short time to bring a team together and find what the best version of of the team is and so the messaging regardless of who we've played whether it's been north melbourne or um, gold coast up in queensland it's been around how much better can we get each week and so we've had some internal measures on that and then we've also been able to go a little bit game to game and and look at certainly last week and how we might improve off the back of that too. So um, I think the, the group's been amazing in really buying into that. And so I guess the privilege of knowing we've got what looks very, very likely we'll play a final the week after. Um, it's even more incentive, I think, to explore how much better we can get regardless of opponent this week. And there is a chance of a home final if you do. Uh, I guess that is an added incentive. I mean, it's, it's honestly just such an exciting position to be in. Um, you know, to have the opportunity to play finals for us is incredible improvement off the back of the first two years um, coming into this competition. And I think we've played 30 games as a group now total. And so to see the, the improvement and the growth in the group um, and particularly the, how much the younger players have added. Um, and there's some middle core players that have been around since day one who've been through many, many losses to get to this point. And so, um, you know, we're honestly just excited that we've earned the opportunity to have these conversations about finals. Because at the halfway mark, I know it's a very short season, but it looked, does it, like, on the field weren't having a lot of success, you just lost your captain. Anything that you can put your finger on that's turned it around? I think, honestly, some of it, um, being an 11-game fixture, it really kind of depends on who you fixture early in the, in the season too. And, you know, we have round one showdown against the Crows, which we absolutely love, and we know how successful they've been as a team, and that's our 21st game as a team, and now we're talking about our 31st game coming up this year, this this week. So there's a big difference between another 10 games with a young group, and, um, you know, in that middle part that you're referencing where, you know, the ledger of wins and losses looks a bit different to what it does right now, we're playing North North Melbourne and Richmond at the start of a congested fixture and prior to that Fremantle who were just really getting up and going in round three and so you know a little bit of is how much we have grown in each game um, but some of it also is looking at who we're playing and what the fixture looks like and every team's fixture looks a little bit different you know there there are teams in this comp that are sitting nicely at the moment who banked early wins and have been able to maintain that momentum and I think what I'm most pleased with this group is our fixture um, certainly in the first period of the year could have challenged us to a point where we dipped down and instead we've gone upwards and that's um that's a real sign of maturity in our group. The congested fixture wasn't popular <coughs> but it seems to have, um, you did really well out of that. Yeah, I think I've spoken a bit about Anthony Gallimarino and certainly our whole coaching group, you know, I was on maternity leave in the early part of this year and um, our entire coaching group and, and Anthony coming in as a high performance coach has been, you know, just incredible in preparing this group in an off season where um, you know, you don't necessarily earn your wins in a pre-season, they come in, in a, what's a long off-season in AFLW and we challenged our group really heavily to put their heads down and work um, significantly harder than what they had in an off-season um, last year and we've seen that and that's starting to pay off now and yeah, I think every opportunity I can to praise certainly the coaching group and the players um, I'll take because they've been exceptional. Um, and just Julia Teekle didn't come up? Yeah, Teeks is um, obviously a really important part of our forward line and um, yeah, she's been really diligent in rehabbing that knee but um, not quite ready for this weekend so we're hopeful, um, assuming we do play week one of finals which is looking incredibly likely, um, we're hopeful she'll be right. Well, as you've played plenty of finals yourself, how do you, you prepare the girls, <coughs> I guess, for that extra step up in intensity as you head into next weekend? I think it's taking every opportunity that you can and um, certainly the Suns 
early in the game last week gave us incredibly, like all the measures of pressure factor um, and what the Suns have on paper in their midfield group is exceptional and they, they threw the kitchen sink at us early and so it's embracing those elements of games where you know the high pressure is going to be on certainly from the start and against finals teams it'll be you have to expect four quarters of that and so really pleased with what the Suns um, threw at us early and um, we took some good learning out of that. And just reflecting on the Suns as well and the other teams that you have beaten this year, they've all been teams that have been in the competition much longer. They're not part of that most recent wave of expansion. Does that also give you a little bit more confidence heading into this point at the end of the season where you've got these really experienced groups that you're able to quite mm. convincingly win, like win in those games? Yeah, I think a temptation would be to compare ourselves to others, but I think the nature of our group and how young we are, we have to compare ourselves to ourselves and certainly the growth that we've had year on year and particularly this year um, is really comes from a lot of things that were put in place nearly three years ago now and so um, yeah I, I think if I was to compare to other teams everyone has different situations certainly in this competition with 16 aside and 21 playing minimal quarter time um, you know 20 minute quarters when you have key players injured, um, that can have a massive impact on your team in a, in a short season and we've seen that for a couple of teams. So I think obviously Janelle Cuthbertson's injury early in the season was massive and, and has been huge for us um, and Janelle's been incredible in leading the way off the field but um, yeah, we'd compare our growth um, week on week. I just want to ask about Emily Borg. She's been incredibly consistent in the back line this year, taking some of the really important forwards. Um, and she's still so young, she's not even 20 yet. How mm. impressed have you been with, with her growth and her consistency really leading that space? I think there's no doubt Amelie Borg's the most underrated defender in the whole competition. Um, she's 19 years old, as you said, um, soon to be 20 and been on our list since day one. And, you know, a lot of people talk about the talent on our list and how we've been able to, um, you know, benefit from different mechanisms in drafting and um, pre-signings with, you know, really highly talented players. But Borgie's one who, um, I think she was one of our later picks in our very first draft, has been here since day one as a 17-year-old finishing school. And, um, you know, you look at the development of her on and off field, she's just been exceptional and always gets um, the best forward in the opposition. And I think um, she certainly should be in all Australian conversations this year. And um, yeah, her work off field as well to help lead this group and just be a genuinely good teammate and work her backside off every week is, um, yeah, really sets the tone for our group. And without Janelle out there, um, she's, she's the leader. Um, and just on this weekend again, around in, we've got Indigenous around, we're still hoping for a really big crowd here at Alberton um, wearing Jazz Stewart's jumper. Can you tell us a little bit about what that will mean to the group? Yeah, obviously Jazz Stewart, um, really family oriented person and um, designed the jumper. Um, with Nan and Pop, um, you know, their, her Nan's story is, is really special and um, she's going to have her family here, including her Nan over the weekend. So we're really excited to share that with her broader family um, from WA. And yeah, certainly we, you would have seen their performance on the weekend against the Suns last week and the way that the group was able to perform and the pride they took um, in the jersey design that Jazz put together um, has been really special and another opportunity to, to represent that in the right way this weekend. Lovely. I would just ask one about the crowd as well and just how exciting it is <laughs> when the crowd gets up and about here and how important it will be to have big numbers here on Sunday to get the girls over the line. Yeah, I think anyone who comes to our games, um, obviously it's a really family oriented space here at Elberton and um, you know, I've got family with a little niece who just loves running around the kids zone, but um, certainly our players absolutely feed off the energy that our people provide and whether that's hanging over the fence near the race or at the precinct or on the other side at the kids zone, we, um, we feel every bit of the support and I think it would be just so nice to hear a massive crowd get behind our group on Sunday afternoon.